lot of uh, difference from where the program was before. Certainly uh, ups and downs in, in transition, something that we expected. Uh, at times, we felt really good about uh, our progress in the cultures, and at times, we're not where we want to be yet. So, uh, but I, I'm glad we got a, the postseason. I think the WNIT run was really good for our kids. I thought Amber Moore especially played with a lot of confidence and, and showed what she'll be able to do in the future. And great for Adrian and Charisma to kind of end on a more positive note than losing in the, in the Big Ten tournament. And, and good for our team to have four more games and to grow and change. And um, obviously, uh, we've said this a lot, Dick Bennett's line that, you know, the first year is about the players. And we uh, tried to meet the players where they're at. We d developed a system that would fit them. Uh, and so now in the, in the off season, we'll implement uh, a four out, one in motion offense uh, that we'll use next year and spend more time with that, teaching them how to play uh, the game of basketball. And they grew in some of that, but had we tried to do that right away when we got here, we'd had to spend the whole time teaching them a motion. Uh, instead, we decided to run more of a, a ball screen offense that would uh, fit them and have success right away. Uh, but I thought we grew. I thought we were better in the, in the end defensively down in the, in the WNT with some of the best defense we've played uh, throughout the year. Uh, I think we'll take another step in that next year. Just it takes a year to run a system and our, our returners will be smarter and better. And so excited about the future. Again, good first step and uh, excited about where we're going. You obviously can't really replace a charisma and a special play like that, but who's going to be your post presence next year? Yeah, um, you know, Jackie Grant's a freshman that's 6'3", uh, coming out of Chicago. She was the Chicago Sun-Times Player of the Year, first team All-State in every poll. Uh, we believe she'll be able to play right away. Uh, again, it's hard to know with freshmen, uh, and that's really the spot. I, I think Sarah Hartwell will step in as a guard and, and start and play a bunch. Um, you know, so I think at the guard positions with Adrian will we'll probably be pretty good. The question is the five, and we may not have a true five. We may play with fours next year. Mackenzie Piper returning. You know, I think she's going to take a step. You know, one of the best things about freshmen is they become sophomores, and uh, so Mackenzie will take a step and be better. And then Jackie, Sarah Livingston from Peoria certainly has all the tools to be a great player. But again, it's hard to know what how freshmen how quickly they're going to pick things up. And, uh, and we may play small at times and play really quick and aggressively and uh, a little bit like we did this year. Would Sarah Hartwell have been the best player in this team, one of the best players if she could have yeah. played? Yeah, she would. And again, she hasn't played in games, so we don't know exactly. But practice-wise, she was one of our best players in practice every single day. And, uh, you know, I think the first time we scrimmaged, Charisma had like 29, Adrian had like 25. The next highest score was Sarah Hartwell uh, with probably around 20. And um, she's certainly capable, has all the tools to be a great player. Um, again, she hasn't played any games, so until we see that. But we feel really good about who she is and her game and, and how good she's going to be. Coach, I know the team was pretty disappointed on not getting into the NCAA tournament, but obviously you played four more games after that. How were you able to kind of get the team's spirits back up? Yeah, I think that if there is an advantage of playing the Big Ten tournament early, it's that it sinks in a little bit. You know, once we lost to Wisconsin, we knew, gosh, our chances probably just you know, went down quite a bit. And then you see some of the mid-majors get knocked off and, and realize that they may be taking a spot like Dayton. Um, and uh, so I think that probably helped. And then, you know, some of the communication with us, you know, for us saying, hey, you got a chance to end this on a positive note, win some basketball games, um, you know, some things that haven't been done here in a while. You're playing in a postseason. Remember what it felt like the last two years when you knew after the Big Ten tournament you were done, when you had 11 wins and nine wins and you're done early March with your season. You know, here's a chance to change and grow and develop. And, and I felt like, honestly, our Toledo game was one of the best wins we had all year on the road. Really tough environment, a team that's 29-3. and three. So I thought that game was really encouraging, uh, the growth in our players. And then the Eastern, uh, Eastern Illinois game as well. It's a game that not much went right for 30 minutes, but we hung with it and had some toughness and then kind of turned it around at the end. I'm not sure we would have had that resolve early in the year in, in that type of game. When you see a team like Georgia fall three points short of the Final Four, you know a team that you beat this season. How much does that kind of inspire you and the team to say, hey, you know, at our best we can be pretty good? Yeah, it's certainly very promising. You know, we beat uh, Nebraska at Nebraska in their Sweet 16 team and handled them. We beat Iowa, who you know finished in the Final 32. Six Big Ten teams won. You know, last year the Big Ten went one and six in the first round. This year it went six and zero oh in the first round. That's a huge change in one year. And we finished, you know, tied for fifth, and we're tied for third going in the last week of the season. So, uh, encouraging for the future, and and certainly something we'll hold on to is you know teams that did really well that we beat. 
And obviously, you know, we need to have better depth than we did this year. We need to be able to play six, seven, and eight and have confidence in that. Um, and hopefully, you know, that'll help the six freshmen we've coming in, we believe are going to be really good basketball players. And the number of returners are just a year more in the system. They're going to be better basketball players. I think that'll help us uh, throughout the year. I know you said the guards post up in the motion offense. Can you sort of describe how, um, who's going to be the guards that you're going to want to post? Yeah, up? I would say Ivory and Sarah Hartwell would be two. Um, Alexis Smith should be good at that as well. Um, those three. You know, Amber will play a four, so Amber will, will get a lot of opportunity to post as well. And we'll work inside out, you know, in a secondary break and in our motion and get touches inside uh, as well. Where this year is kind of just charisma, you know, that we posted. And next year we'll have opportunities. Our, our fives may be really good shooters. Jackie's a good shooter. Piper's a good shooter. So those guys may screen and step and step out, and we may get a guard in there and post and take advantage, get the ball in the paint a little bit more with different people instead of just one. You know, you'd like to play a lot more players. I mean, the freshmen will get a lot of playing time. Next yeah, year. I mean, we don't know. We, we feel like it's a top 25 recruiting class, and, and certainly a, a kids that have a lot of potential. You don't really know until you get them. The great thing is we're going to get two hours with them this summer. They changed that rule, made it like them, man. That will really help us. We'll do all of our mini clinics in the summer that Coach Davilibus brought in, um, and really good teaching stuff. So they'll, they'll be you know, farther this fall than, obviously, uh, with us being able to work with them. And we, we certainly feel like they all have potential, but two or three of them are going to play. Two or three of them have a chance to start, and, um, which is exciting for our program. Your squad, how many players? Yeah, we have up to 15 scholarships. Um, right now, uh, we have 13 kind of returning. Um, you know, this is a time of year when you hear about transfers and all that kind of stuff. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, we may sign a transfer, too, depending if it's the right kid and, and the right thing for our program. How do you think Amber's going to handle just um, having a a little more like a target on her back every night, just maybe being one of the more of the a bigger offensive weapons and maybe shooting less and trying to drive to the basket more. Yeah, I think she's going to uh, handle that well. I think, you know, she, one of the things you want from your seniors is consistency, and uh, we need her to be consistent. And I thought she did a great job in the postseason of doing that. Uh, I thought, you know, the end of the Big Ten play, she was a little up and down. We need her to be consistent and be consistent in practice every day. Those are kids are going to be looking to her, how she practices, how she carries herself. Um, but she has a lot of other returners that have now been in the system as well, uh, and I think that'll help her as well. We'll have a lot of kids that, you know, this is their second year in the system now instead of just year one. Anything else here in the room? All right, thank you. Appreciate it.